So you probably clicked on this video because you have been feeling down in your life, stressed, or even anxious, or overall just unhappy. And maybe you're curious what happiness actually feels like or how to actually cultivate it in your life. Something I do want to say before we start this video is a reminder that all feelings and phases in life are temporary. So although you may have been feeling down, stressed, or anxious in your life for a period of time, just know that everything is temporary. And I know that when you're struggling with these emotions and feelings, that is not the most helpful thing to hear. I remember everyone telling me when I was at my lowest point that to be happy and to just do what made me happy. And I'm just like, I don't even know what happiness is because nothing that I did made me happy or feel joy. And so I went on a journey to find what happiness truly was. And today I'm gonna to share those things with you. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Julia. I'm a certified holistic wellness coach who specializes in anxiety. I make content around anxiety management, holistic health, and really going after a life that you love. So if you like that content, make sure to stick around and follow along for more videos. So when we define happiness, it's basically an inner state of peace that does not rely on your circumstances. People who are more happy are usually more resilient to bounce back from setbacks. And they also choose to bring happiness into their lives instead of depending on their circumstances around them. However, we do need to talk about genetics here because happiness is also a set point. So it's 50% genetic, 10% your circumstances, and 40% your habits, thoughts, and behaviors. So when we look at these sections individually, 10% are circumstances. We don't always have the control over our circumstances or our situations. Sometimes we just need to stick it out where we are at the time and there's not much we can do about it in the moment. Now, 40% is based on our thoughts, habits, and behaviors. This is something completely within our control that we can work on. And this is through work of the subconscious mind. So if you watch any of my previous videos, I talk about how 90% of our thoughts, behaviors, and actions are dictated by our subconscious mind, what we believe about ourselves and the values that we hold. Working on our subconscious mind, bringing that to awareness, and shifting our belief system is what's gonna help us change those thoughts, habits, and behaviors. So we definitely have 40% of our happiness within our control. Now we have 50% genetic. So a lot of people would say 50% genetic, well, there's no way around this. We don't have this within our control. However, there is a process called epigenetics. And to give you the real definition of epigenetics, epigenetics is the study of how your behaviors and environment can cause changes that affect the way your genes work. So unlike genetic changes, epigenetic changes are reversible and do not change your DNA sequence. But they can change how your body reads a DNA sequence. So the more we work on shifting our thoughts, habits, and behaviors will also change our gene structure. So now the 50% is also within our control as we work on these different habits, thoughts, and behaviors. That means 90% of our happiness is actually within our control. We just need to tune in and work on and develop the skill. At its core, happiness is a skill. It's something that needs to be nourished and worked on. And sometimes that actually means not doing such fun work on yourself. You often refer to it as doing the work, meaning healing past wounds and exploring your root to your anxiety or trauma. A lot of people don't want to go through that, but that is a step in improving your happiness because you are looking at your current thoughts. You're doing an audit of your behavior and actions and why you react to certain things the way that you do. And then you are taking steps to start to change those things, which is going to increase happiness. You are developing that skill by working on yourself. 
And with any skill, the more you practice it or the more you develop it, the better results you're going to get and the faster you will get them. So if you show up for yourself consistently every single day and do one thing to work on your mindset or one thing to instill a new habit, that is taking a step towards your own happiness. Explore different ways that can help you through this process as well. Use different tools like journaling, meditation, exercise, mindfulness, gratitude. Gratitude is huge when it comes to the effect of it on our happiness. Choosing to be grateful for your life as it is in the present moment has powerful effects on your overall well-being. I encourage you or challenge you to wake up for the next week and keep a gratitude journal. Write the three things that you're grateful for every single day and try to change them up every single day. The more you explore gratitude, the more you have to dig deep to find what you're truly grateful for. And even the small things can change your perspective on life. I think gratitude had to be the best tool that I used for myself when increasing my overall happiness. So with that being said, I do have a resource for you down in the link below where you can explore gratitude a little bit further. It walks you through the week to start to look for things that you're grateful for in your life. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check out that link below. Through my journey, I learned that true happiness is gratitude for the present moment, freedom from negative self-talk, self-love for all that you are, trust in yourself, the universe, and all that is to come for you. And there you go. Those are some facts on happiness and how you can bring more of it into your life. If you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe thank you again so much for watching and i will talk to you guys all in my next video bye, -bye.